Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Madra. I have an encouraging word for you today, so please stay tuned. It's Madra here. I want to bring you a quick word of encouragement from the book of Esther. You know, this morning when I was in my Bible study, I heard the word Haman or Haman. And it was right before I was about to go into devotion, and open up the Bible and um, just see what the Lord wanted to speak to me on today. But he spoke a word and I knew it was for you immediately. I knew the Lord wanted me to pass this word on. So he took me to the book of Esther chapter 7. So I want to encourage you to study this book in your devotion time because it's a powerful book. And it's powerful for you because many of you, not all of you, but this word is for someone who has enemies in the background who have been doing things to kill your destiny kill something good in your life they're participating with the enemy enemy's agenda there's an agenda that comes from john 10 10 the word of god teaches us that the enemy wants to steal kill and destroy and so that's the number one object of the devil in your life is to bring an end to something good that god wants to do in you and through you in this hour so haman and the title of this word if you want to call it anything is if you only knew if you only knew this is an hour of exposure and deliverance for some people and you'll know if this word is for you because you've been fasting you've been humbling yourself you're walking in humility humility like esther and because of esther's obedience and humility it moved the hand of god and as a result she was delivered and her people were delivered from a diabolical plan of the enemy so God is going to allow the people that have been plotting against you to fall in the trap that they set for you. And he's doing it because he wants to show them that he is your protector. You know, many people make fun of you. Many people um, doubt what you say about the Lord. They see some things that have happened in your life, but they don't understand the nature and the character of the Christian walk. They don't understand what faith is. You have to Walk with God during the good, the bad, and the ugly times because he's true to his word. He doesn't lie. And he may not show, show up when you want him to, but he's always on time. He's always on season. He always has a purpose. And he's going to bring about a purpose through your pain and suffering, but they don't know that. So they want to kick you while you're down. And some of them are actually in the background planning your demise. This is a hard word to swallow. But it's the truth, and it's the truth that sets us free, like we were talking about on yesterday, John 8, 32. It's the truth that sets us free. So when you face certain hard truths in your life, it's going to bring a higher level of freedom and deliverance in areas that you have not seen breakthrough in for years. And so chapter 7 of Esther. Read it in your spare time, but I'm going to pull out some verses that are key to this word. And I'm going to try not to hold you long, but I have to get everything out that the Lord wants me to bring out to you. Because he said this was an urgent word for some of you and you needed to hear it. But verse 2. And the king said again to Esther at the wine banquet, whatever your request, Queen Esther, you will be granted it. Whatever you want up to half the kingdom. You've moved the hand of God by your prayers and fasting. He's extending his scepter of favor to you. The heavens are open and it's not for everybody. So don't feel bad if it's not your season for this. Just keep walking in the Lord. Keep being obedient and humble and your season for this will come. But for those who this is for, God is extending his hand to you and he wants you to petition him to protect you from hidden enemies. Verse 5 says that the king asks his wife, Esther, who is he? Who, where, where is this man who dared to do such a thing? Esther said, a ruthless enemy. It's the wicked Haman. Haman stood against, terrified, stood aghast, excuse me, terrified before the king and queen. In a rage, the king got up from the wine banquet and went out to the palace garden. But Haman remained, pleading with Esther the queen to spare his life. For he could see that the king had decided to do him in. Whoever's deciding to do you in, the Lord is going to deliver you. He's going to block the plan and it's not going to turn out the way that they thought it was going to turn out. Verse 9, 
So one of the king's attendant in verse 9 pointed the fact out that Haman, the enemy to Esther and her people, had built gallows, and they were 75 feet high, that Haman made for Mordecai. That's one of Esther's relatives. Many of you know that. And so he raised Esther, he groomed her, and um, he gave Esther insights into the season of life that she was in. And um, so it, he made these gallows right. And he prepared them for Esther. He prepared them for her people. He thought his plan was going to go out. But instead, God, he switched the script. He traded places with what he was going to do to them. The king said, hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's anger subsided. God is merciful. He's been merciful to these people in your life. He's been patient with them. He's given them time to repent. But the bottom line is that the Lord is your protector. And when you're in covenant with him, he's going to deliver you. He's been showing me the number seven and the number five lately. And when that verse that said the gallows stood 75 feet, that popped out to my spirit. Seven and five. So seven means many things in the word of God. It can mean completion. It can mean spiritual perfection. The Lord built the earth in or built everything in creation in seven days and then he rested. But one of the 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 um the words that's popping out for you is rest. God is calling on you to rest in the truth that he's fighting for you. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting. Because the enemies in the background have made plans to take you out in some way. But God is going to use those plans to humble them and to show them that he's protecting for you. He's fighting for you. He's with you. He has been there all along. And the number five is signifying the grace and the peace he's got on you right now. The season that you're entering in, you're going to have to do a little self-care. You're going to have to receive supernatural help. And you're going to just rest in prayer and promises. And you've been through so much warfare in your last season, you don't know how much is taken out of you. So God is calling you to, to physical rest and spiritual rest for a season. Because you're going to enter into another season in which he's going to use you and repurpose the pain. But right now, he wants you to know that he's helping you and he wants you to rest on what he's promised you. Amen. So stay humble, stay obedient, because you just don't know. You don't know what's been coming against you in the background and you just don't know what God is about to do in you and through you. Don't give up because you want this promise to birth. You know, I heard Pastor Vlad talking about on his one of his podcasts that he's you know he mentioned something very powerful and it stuck with me he said that you know the birthing process is nasty it's messy but you don't you don't throw away the baby once it's come no you clean it up you clean that baby up and um you know life is like that and when you're going through deliverance it's going to be messy, but don't stop in the middle of the process. Don't look at it for what it is right now. You, the situation is going to be cleaned up and, um, you know, there's going to be deliverance in your life. But in the meantime, while it's messy and you're going through the birthing process, you know, just know that the joy will come after the thing that God is doing in your life is going to be birthed. You know, it's going to work out. So three things the Lord wants me to leave with you. You know, you are an Esther and, you know, you may be a male that's watching this. You may not be a queen, but you're certainly a king. You're certainly a royal priesthood of God. And God wants you to know that you're beautiful, you're blessed, and you are protected. And he wants you to start viewing yourself the way that he views you and not the way the world views you. Amen. So I hope this blesses you. Talk soon.